Have you ever wondered how you make flexible urethane resin parts? I'm going to show you how I make some flexible, overmolded medical parts. Yep, there's electronics inside that thing. I'm going to show you how it's done. Don't forget to follow me on social media on Twitter at Bots and Design, and now on Instagram at Bots and Design. I always post stuff there long before it gets to YouTube here. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Don't forget to check out the design and making merch just below the video on the shelf. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, leggings, and phone cases. This project all started when my client on and on saw one of my videos and reached out and asked if I could help them with some of these flexible over molded medical parts. The project started with some 3D data and progressed from there to a SLA master. So the process that we're going to follow in this video is mastering that SLA part, making uh, silicone molds and then casting the over molded parts. To master the SLA part, we're going to prime it with some uh, primer. I usually use Duplicolor uh, that's readily accessible in the store and I don't have to mix anything up into my gun. I make some special sanding tools and I'm always, always, as you know, using a sanding block or some sort of a tool. That's the only way to get a good finish on anything that you're priming and finishing. I use a little bit of compressed air, of course came from my compressor, to clean out and remove any remaining water. So several coats of primer, sanding to ultimately get what we want. So here I'm just building up an acrylic base. This is something that's going to drop into the bottom of the mold box and we're going to place our part on there that we've mastered and cast the silicone on top of that. This base is acrylic cut on the laser. Fantastic for this kind of thing and I just drop it into the pre-made mold box that I've divided off. And we're going to use a little bit of museum wax to hold the part in place. Uh, you can use museum wax. Uh, oftentimes I'll use double-sided sticky tape uh, as well. That works pretty good. So we've got the piece in there. We're going to drop in some keys, which happen to be random acrylic uh, scraps that I have. And we have to guard against some electrical contacts that we need to have exposed in the final piece. So I also have this SLA part here that we're going to glue in place with uh, some white glue. And there's going to be a plug. Since this part is uh, pretty deep, has some undercuts, we're going to put a plug in here that's going to be removed. So that'll make the silicone a little bit more flexible when we go to remove our part and make things a little bit easier for us. All right, gonna mix up the appropriate amount or volume of silicone and then add our activator to the silicone. This is a 40A uh, silicone and it gets the appropriate amount of activator. He happens to be blue. You want to always mix your silicone really, really well. Working time on this stuff uh, on a lot of silicones is quite long, up to an hour sometimes, even more. So you've got plenty of time, no need to rush. And then we're going to vacuum degas this. Uh, this is all sped up, but I would think that uh, vacuum degassing, at least for this stuff, takes about 20 to 30 minutes and it becomes uh, in, into a state where there are no bubbles pulling up from the bottom anymore. When you pour your silicone, the key is to pour it in a stream on top of itself so that the silicone flows out across the mold and onto the part, thus not trapping any air anywhere. You just let that silicone flow out, be patient. Once it's cured, and you can heat cure the stuff if you need to. I like to let it cure overnight. 
We're gonna remove that false acrylic bottom and that's gonna give us access to the bottom of the mold so that we can set it up to make the second half of the mold. You always wanna leave the part in there. We definitely don't wanna take that out. I am removing the plug from the other side because it actually sticks up out uh, beyond the mold box. Can't have that. I'll leave it in there for uh, molding. And I have a little bit of cleanup to do here. So depending upon how good you stuck your part to your false bottom, whether you use tape or wax, sometimes a little bit of silicone creeps in and a little bit of cleanup is needed. Here I'm using a pair of tw uh, tweezers and an X-Acto blade. So we need to add our vent holes so that whatever excess material we pour into the mold has a place to escape. And I'm using some dowels. They are slightly tapered on the end and I glue them on with some white uh, PVA glue. So it's easy to remove. And lastly, we need to add some release agent onto the silicone so that when we pour the second half of the mold, the silicone doesn't stick to itself and I only apply it onto the silicone. Let's mix up the silicone for the second half of the mold. If you look really close at the mold, you'll see I've added some additional about one inch, maybe two, two and a half centimeter walls to get a little bit more height on uh, the back half of the mold so we can have some good strength here. Again, mix up your silicone really good. Uniform thickness. Sometimes I like to add a little bit of color into it just to differentiate the two halves of the silicone. And again, we're pouring it out on top of itself from one place, at least until it's flowed out, uh, thus minimizing the chance of any trapped air bubbles underneath uh, or in the silicone. So let that pour out and then it'll cure overnight and we'll be able to take it apart, demold the part. Let's go ahead and do that. Take everything apart. I remove my vents and I carefully peel the two halves together, revealing the master. I'm careful to not destroy the master in case things don't work out and I got to create another mold. In this case, everything looks really good. No air bubbles or anything like that. This is an overmolded part. There are existing electronics that go on the inside of this. These uh, electronics are held uh, or connected via some snaps to the human's body. This is a, uh, ultimately this is some sort of a heart monitor. And the little snaps that I build in in the silicone are just not firm enough to hold the part in place. And so I'm going to remove those little standoffs that I built into the part and we are going to make little wooden pegs that are going to allow these uh, snaps to snap into place. I take a brass rod that I have sharpened the inside of the tube with and I drive that through the silicone mold so that I can drop in my little wooden pins that will allow my uh, flexible printed circuit board to snap to these wooden pegs and hold the part in place in the right place and then snap on and off during uh, the molding process. So here, let's get this one set up and I have that additional SLA part, which is a cover that's gonna protect those uh, metal pins that stick up. And that's important because this whole piece holds another electronic unit and we need to protect those metal contacts so that they don't get covered with urethane during the process. Okay, let's make some sample parts. And these parts are gonna be without the electronics. All we're trying to do is figure out for the client at this point is the correct durometer of material to use for the flexible part. So there will not be any electronics in these little sample parts. And I make a whole bunch. We're gonna start with a 35 Shore A material. This is pretty soft stuff. This is what we thought we were gonna use in the very beginning of the project. And so I need to do some tests to see what this material is actually like. We're using uh, Thermoset Solutions 
uh, hyperset uh, urethane material here. Thermoset Solutions, located here in Michigan. They were fantastic. They mixed the material for me in the color and were very, very helpful in the entire process of the project. So this is the first sample prod part. There's no electronics in here, like I mentioned. It's just to allow us to experience the material and see what the flex is like. It's pretty soft, and ultimately, we're going to end up using something much, much stiffer. And there's the part that it ultimately holds, and you can see it can kind of barely hold this part. So that's not going to work. So we're going to try some different materials. We try in a 60 uh, a shore uh, material here and this is a little bit stiffer but ultimately still too soft and I'm just coloring these in as I go along so let's try this I believe this is an shore 80 material and the blue one here is a 70 shore uh, material and we end up going with a 70 shore material so let's go ahead make some parts this is how the parts come from the client in a little baggie you can see so they're handmade uh, boards soldered on uh, terminals all of that stuff and we're gonna snap them into the back half of the mold onto those wooden pegs uh, through the modified mold that we made and we're gonna guard against molding in those metal contacts and we cover it with the little metal cover let's make some parts again hyperset 70a uh, from thermoset solutions right here in michigan they make a wonderful product let's mix that up and i'm going to show you how i go about molding these parts most of the videos on YouTube that you see about resin casting are for hard resin parts, guys turning pen blanks, that sort of thing. So when you're making products and samples, prototypes and stuff like that, you'll end up using all kinds of different materials. And this is one of those cases. So uh, resin and the hardener put together just like regular resin casting. It's just we end up with a flexible material in the end. And I'm gonna pour this into a syringe the syringe has a tip on the end, and then this tip is gonna allow me to inject the resin deep inside the cavity of the silicone mold to reduce my chances of having any air bubbles way down at the bottom of the part. So I mix the material, I'm putting it into the uh, degassing chamber inside the syringe and I'm degassing the material inside of that syringe. This working time on this material is about seven to 10 minutes, and I wanna maximize the amount of time that I have uh, with the material before it gets unworkable. I make a little cover for the bottom of the syringe, and here I'm able to inject that tip down into the groove in my mold to really get it down in there so I have no air bubbles. Now, to make sure that I have no air bubbles because I can't mess up on these parts. Every one of them has to be perfect. I pop it back into the degassing tank and I degas it for a little bit more to try to pull out any bubbles. You saw the printed circuit board there on the back half of the mold. It's been filled up. We're gonna sandwich the two together and the key here is a little bit of pressure with some clamps and you will see the urethane start to come out the vent holes that I have made. And we're gonna pop that into the tank and we're gonna cure this under pressure with heat. Uh, the pressure is probably not needed, uh, but the heat certainly helps the process along and we need to demold to take a look at our parts. So I want to be very careful here as to not mess anything up when we demold. If there is a circuit board in there, we don't want to destroy that, so be really careful. The parts come out nice. You can see the snaps on the bottom. You can also see the circuit board. And we're going to trim off these little vents, uh, these little vent stacks. And now we need to remove the little cover that was protecting our contacts on the inside of the part. 
Some urethane did seep underneath there, and so some handwork is going to be required. And I use a pair of stainless steel tweezers here to remove that material. A little bit of seeped under where the snaps are, and that needs to be removed. And again, some nice stainless steel tweezers. So we have the snaps that are visible, we have the contacts that are visible, and then this is the actual monitor that the whole thing holds and that collects the data to help the patient. You can see all the parts that I made here. That's soft, flexible, overmolded urethane parts. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the bottom right of the video or below the video. Give it a thumbs up and follow the channel there as well. Hey, and don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook sometimes, Twitter usually, and now Instagram. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.